Talking Again podcast. What's up, everybody? This is Fidel of Talking Again podcast. My guest this week is Marine veteran slash music producer Chris Swift, aka Swizzy Swift, also goes by Swizzy. Well, um, this week we just pretty much catch up. Uh, he's a returning guest. Chris Swift is. Uh, we catch up on some of the uh, upcoming projects for Dream Music Records, which is, you know, the label that he's created. Uh, We also get into, I should say very extensively, we get into uh, his, Chris's time in the Marine Corps. So some of the things I didn't know, you know, there's a lot of stress that goes into to the mind of, of someone that's out there overseas, you know, from one country to another and just being stationed out there and you know, it takes a lot of a lot of wear and tear on the mind. So um, we definitely get into a lot of that. Uh, we talk about the mental health, his mental health situation, and how he deals with it, um, and and just how important it is to kind of take care of the the not only the body but the mind. Most importantly, um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, it's just a you know casual conversation that we kind of all tie it all into into that, just that mental health. You know? So um, you guys make sure. You, uh, Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, check it out. We're all over all major platforms on all the audio uh, podcasts, uh, uh, specifically Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. So, um, yeah, give it a like. Check it out. Um, thank you very much. Here we go. Let's tap into it. Checking out Sheba. You get into Sheba? No. Oh, man. Mr. Doozy, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for it to hit a dollar. I'm pulling, <laughs> pulling for it, man. Yeah. I got 200 million Shiba coins. I'm just, just, it just needs to hit a dollar. Yeah, it I'm can still tank like, after that. It can just hit a dollar. I'm, I'm still. You're gonna have to like teach me on it because I'm still skeptical with this, the, the yeah, whole e currency thing. But whatever. I mean, I bought it when it was dirt cheap. Yeah, and I feel like you have to, right? To like you make to. money. Otherwise, yeah. like if I get in on it right now, like I may not make shit. You know. I like, mean, no, you. It's still at a very good price to buy it. Like, uh, cause when I bought Dogecoin, I, um, I had about $300 or so. I had 200,000 Dogecoins mm-hmm. and, um, I messed up because what, uh, what don't say you was, sold. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> but, but, but I sold when it hit Yeah. last year, January, January, 2020, when mm-hmm. it hit, yeah. I was up 10,000. Damn. I hit ten thousand, so I'm like, all right, I'm sell off, I'm sell off. Well, I didn't, I, I, I was like, you know, I was kind of on the fence of selling or holding. Yeah. And the wife's all like, hey, you're, you're ahead, you should just sell off because it, it dipped a tad bit, it dipped. I'm like, you know what, I'm sell off. Yeah. Sold it off. I think I came, came, uh, I claimed about nine thousand, like ninety five hundred, something yeah. like that. Cool. And then it dipped hard the next day. She goes, see, I told you. Yeah. I was like, oh, that was a good call. That was a good call. Yeah. May, I think it was like May or June of last year. It went even higher. It, it got all the way up. I bought this before it was even a penny. It was like, yeah. it had like four zeros when <laughs> I was buying them. The, this went all the way up to like 81 cents. Damn. So my 200,000 Doge coins could have been damn near two hundred thousand dollars <laughs> and i'm just i kick myself why the fuck did i sell why yeah. why did i sell it well I'm not, I'm not gonna do that with shiba yeah i put about 450 into it i got 200 million shiba coins just hit a dollar just hit a dollar yeah i just need a college fund just hit a Jesus dollar Christ, a college fund <laughs> dude so the 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 nine grand whatever that's something that you got and you reinvested into the same coin or different coins uh well you know i was the, very I was very amateur about it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was buying the dip, but I bought it when it dipped. It was well above when I was buying it before. Mm. So I'm buying it at like 15, 16 cents, okay. 20 cents. Yeah. When I originally bought it, I, like I said, I, I was buying it like it was four or five zeros before it right. even hit a cent. Yeah. So... You know, it, I didn't get the same amount mm-hmm. of coins that I would have originally had. Mm. Wasn't even close. Yeah. I think maybe I got about 10,000, 15,000 coins. And then, you know, it just kept tanking, tanking, tanking. So I'm like, I'm, I, I, I ended up losing it all. 
Mm. Long story short, I lost all of it. Ouch. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> see, no I kidding. see me like all right. This is let me tell you how I I go to Vegas. When I go to Vegas, I go with like all right, and this is really cheap, guys. This is like one night of of gambling for most people, or maybe like one hour of gambling for most people. <laughs> I go with like hundred fifty bucks to gamble at, really? Ve- at Vegas. Real simple. I do pie gal poker because I can. I know I can sit there and drink all night long with twenty, thirty bucks. You know, mm. forty bucks. So that's why. That's what I do. So if I go out there with one hundred fifty bucks, and let's just say on one night, I made two hundred. Oh damn! Let's. Well, on that's that's good for me. Let's just oh, say. Okay. I, let's just say I do that. I make two hundred bucks. <clears throat> I'll cash those two hundred. Put them in my pocket or my spend my extra spending cash for Vegas, an extra lap dance, if you will. <laughs> and, right. <laughs> and then that keeps spending that hundred and fifty I originally. Oh yeah. Thought about spending, you know. Uh, so I will cash those earnings, right? Like I'll oh, cash yeah. that out, and that's mine. So did you? You don't those nine grand? Like you didn't cash it? Like let me put that shit in the bank account. No, <laughs> I didn't. Um, like I said, I was very amateur about yeah, it. Yeah. Now. When I did go to the casino, I went to the uh, San Manuel. I did exactly that. Yeah, we we went between me and the wife. We we went with three hundred. Yeah, and um, we we're big time spenders, guys. We're big time spenders. <laughs> <laughs> big time yeah. spenders, bro. <laughs> One fifty three hundred. We're breaking the bank yeah. over here. <laughs> no, um, so uh, we went and uh, we, you know we did the, we did the slots. We did, we did those little um, I don't know what the hell they're called. I'm not a big time gambler. Yeah. But we like did blackjack or well, I'm a I'm a cards guy. Oh, okay, so big time blackjack. I made so the wife hit a couple of jackpots on the uh, I guess they're called slots. I don't know the little the little games that you sit down the yeah, little computer yeah. shits. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, so, penny slots or whatever. They, yeah, there yeah, you go, yeah. penny slots. Yeah. So she was she kept hitting, but you know it wasn't like jackpot, jackpot, like you know six million or ten million. No, it was you know you win forty bucks, yeah, you know, twenty bucks, mm-hmm. whatever. So, you know, it was cool. So she kept playing. She kept using that money. I took, uh, I want to say I took about 80 or or $100 with me, went to the blackjack table. And I kept, I uh, it was only a $20 buy-in. You know, I put in whatever, uh, played, lost, put in again, played, I hit. Cool. You know, played again. Hit. Cool. Played again. Lost. I lost 20. All right. Not bad. Yeah. Lost another 20. Okay. Then I lost another 20. I was back to my original 100. I played again. Then I won. Played again. Then I won. I won 10 straight games on 20. Yeah. <laughs> $20. Nice. Won 10 straight games. I'm like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I am done. Yeah. The dude was like, uh, do you want to play again? I'm like, nope. I'm done. Cash out. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> this pays for the dinner. Right, <laughs> man. No, uh, dude. I mean that. That's how I gamble. Because I, I, I know it's not really gambling. That's just probably like playing, right? Because yeah. gambling would be you win, you're up, you know, two hundred. Then you bet, you bet those two hundred because you get yeah. you earn more, right? Yes. That yes. would be that yes. would legit be gambling. I don't. No. That's why I don't gamble, especially because this is my first time actually gambling. You know, outside of little football pool, oh, right, 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 yeah. fantasy football, yeah. or whatever, little side bets on yeah. games. You know, that's not gambling because it costs like ten dollars. Yeah, like yeah. I do. I do a football pool at work. It's ten dollars or it's five dollars a card. Right. I do two cards. Ten dollars a week. Mm-hmm. It's nothing. Mm-hmm. So like when I when I this is my first big time like gambling experience, and I'm like, you know what? My dad was a really big cards player with us, and he always fuck. I I couldn't take it anymore. He had the worst possible head. He always made us fucking fold. <laughs> he had the worst head. <laughs> We're having full houses, straights, royal flush. Yeah. I had a royal flush, and he made me fold. I'm just like, oh, uh, yeah. He was he was really good. Yeah. So when I, when I was up, I would always, you know, I always remember to going back, you know, back in the day, and like when we were playing cards, I remember, you know. We're going all in. We're going all in. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that with actual money. <laughs> that was play chips. Yeah. <laughs> this is but this is real money. Yeah. I'm not doing that. Did, so growing up, growing up in the East Coast, you never went to Atlantic City, or were you already? No, you're I'm you're, not. you're you're too young. I was way too young. Yeah. I actually I went to boot camp when I was 18. I was barely oh, yeah. like just a couple weeks. Yeah, I was yeah. barely maybe a month and a week. 18, yeah. 18 uh, a month and a week. So 
Yeah, I didn't. I never got a chance to gamble. And then when I went to Vegas for like the Marine Corps balls, mm -hmm. uh, I was twenty, and then twenty one, because I missed nineteen. My eighteenth. Uh, well, when I was eighteen, I was in uh, MCT Marine Combat Training, so I didn't go then. And then when I was nineteen, I was in Afghanistan, nah. so I didn't go then. So when I was twenty, and then when I was twenty one. I went to Ve we went to Vegas uh, to do the Marine Corps ball and stuff, but I never gambled. Yeah. I was I was always like, all drinking. Oh hell yeah, <laughs> of course. They're like duh, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> of course, yeah, that had to happen. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I was it was just like a because I always remembered that like you know, yeah. I was like fuck, and I, I always watched the uh, the World Series of Poker on ESPN. Chris Moneymaker. Oh, that, dude, oh, yeah, that yeah. dude was great. Yeah. Chris Moneymaker. I I always I always liked that guy just because he had the same name as me and his last name was Moneymaker. Moneymaker. And I I thought like maybe it was just a nickname. He actually made that his his that's his legit last name. <laughs> I was like, he wasn't born with that. He he yeah he he, he, he uh, bought into it. Yeah, he he changed it. Too. Well, I knew I knew I grew you know growing up like we used to play you know messing around playing Texas Hold'em. I was one of those guys that would go to the tournaments, and I would always do a buy-in just to kind of give to the pot because I would always. I would go all in on the first hand probably sometimes. Yeah, just, <laughs> ah, just so I can go hang out with the guys and yeah. you know, that's all me. That was me. I was always the first one out. But uh <laughs> one of the guys that we played with was uh shout out to George. Um he he was uh his nickname was Moneymaker. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, every, you know, he nicknamed himself. I don't know if he did or someone nicknamed him, but he was George Moneymaker. Oh, so wow. for the longest time on my phone, it was always George Moneymaker on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but he's still Juarez. I think his original last name is Juarez. So shout oh, out to okay. George Juarez out there if you watching. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, that's that. That's it's just crazy, man. The whole gambling thing. Yeah, it's too scary for me. Yes. I stay away from it. I'm and good. it leads to uh, it leads to addictions. It leads to yes. it leads to a whole mess of problems. It does, man. I mean, it it, it really it really does. And right? that's another thing too, because you know, I had a family when me and the wife went. So you know my my daughter was one maybe, mm -hmm. yeah no she was she was one, in a few months, so it was like you know I don't want to be this, you know I don't want to gamble yeah hardcore all this and that yeah it's cool making money, but I'd rather you know I'd rather win a little bit put in the savings save it for next time you go yeah so this way you're playing with their money and not your money exactly and when and you know what it's it's it, it is all like you know. There's there's that old that old saying that they say like you're playing with your baby's milk money you know what I mean like yes like you really yes. are like when uh, you yeah. have a family like you're you're that's all there like you should be providing for your family mm -hmm. and then, but I get it like I know people out there gambling they're doing the thing that's fine especially online now it's so easy to do it you yes. can download an app and just fucking really do it but at the same time like know your if limits. you have a yeah know your limits because if you have that problem you have to address it isn't gambling. that the biggest that's the biggest issue man. Oh, Gambling drinking? is yeah. just like drinking, bro. Yeah. You, if you don't know your limits, you're just gonna black out, right? Pretty much. Yeah, you have to. I mean, uh, I always tell my kid, you know, like I, I'm, you know, he's 11, and I keep trying to teach him, like, you know how they say, teach him the way, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm teaching him my way, you know, not the way. It's my way. Yeah. <laughs> so really, that's what it is, right? Because I, I, I don't know if it's the right way or not, but it's just my way. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, if your way hasn't gotten you in trouble, hasn't, you know, brought an addiction, then it's got to be the right way. It's at least, right? I mean, it's a good way of thinking of it. But so I always try to tell him, like, look, man, when you have an, a problem, an issue, you're upset about something, we have to identify it. Mm -hmm. if you, once you figure out how to, once you identify it correctly, then it's easier for you to resolve it. Mm -hmm. And yes. that's one of the things that I'm working with him right now. Because, you know, he'll get the frustrated. The actually had, they had an acronym. I forgot. It's been so long. But well, that'd be an awesome if you could remember For, like, that identifying or... stuff like that. Yeah. How to how to identify, like, a situation. How to, you know, go about stuff. And I forgot what the, the acronym is. I'm pretty sure it's on Google or some shit. I'm sure someone can Google it. Leave it down on the comments down below. Let us know exactly what he's talking about. And then, um, like, it would tell you, like, you know, you identify your problem. You know, you fix or you uh, you make your adjustments, blah, 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 and then you fix your, you find your solution. Yeah. So, you know, going off with what you say, you know, it, it just hits, you know, with the whole Marine thing. Like, I didn't really have that growing up. All I had was playing cards is me, my, my dad, my brother, my sister, my mom. And, you know, we're all going in because we see all these guys on TV going yeah, all in and stuff. The shades <laughs> and everything. <laughs> yeah, the, the shades and the hoods yeah, and yeah. smoking cigars. Having whiskey glasses yeah. on there, you know, 
we see all this and we're like, oh, we're going in, we're going in. We, we, there's no way we could possibly lose. You know, we're going all in. And then, you know, my dad has like a pair of twos or some shit. Yeah, yeah. And he gets all of us to fold. And then we're all like, yeah, but we had a straight. You folded. But we had a straight. We had a royal flush. <laughs> we had a royal flush. Yeah. But you folded. And I'm like, and then we're, you know, if like one or two games, we're done. Yeah. It's like, man, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so It's that mind game. You know, yeah. some people are really good at it, you know. Yes. You got to be good at that. Well, speaking of mind games, though, um, I, sometimes your own mind plays games on it when you, and that's hard. You yes. Know? Yeah. It's just trying to look for a quick, quick little segue onto what we're going to talk about. But um, for you yourself, you know, we're talking about in the Marines, <laughs> you know, being stationed out in over, overseas like that. How how crazy was that? Going from somebody from New York who, I don't know if you traveled a lot when you were young, Not but really. all of a sudden now you're in a whole new country. How was that for you? That is a culture shock and a half. Right? Bro, when I tell you, when we first landed in uh, Afghanistan in Camp Dwyer, mm-hmm. you get off the plane. It's like 10,000 degrees outside. It, it's it's horrendous. And you, know, of, you, got, this. you got sandstorms. Oh, no, no. We're we're in full uniform. Oh, you know? yeah. We got a, a long sleeve. They call it the blouse. It's like a long sleeve, like an outer jacket. Yeah. You know, with a green shirt underneath. And we got long pants on, boots, you know, our cover and stuff. And uh, you're getting out and you're carrying your pack. You know, you got, you got, you, um, yeah, you carry your pack yeah. off off the plane. And uh, you know, it's like it's like a hundred. We got there. It was October. No, September sixth. September sixth was um when we got there, and it was about a hundred, probably about a hundred. 1520 damn something like that in september in september in september <laughs> dry as fuck oh it was the driest heat i've ever experienced yeah. i've experienced dry heat before you know in 29 palms and camp Hill. well not really camp Hill. it was humid yeah. by the ocean right but 29 palms that before then was like the hottest i've ever been and it was in it was in the 100 100 teens you know 110 yeah. 115 of dry heat yeah, you get over there. It's like a hundred something in the mor- like early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you got to see <clears throat> winter time over there. Winter time is like the summer here. Oh shit! So it gets so 80s, hot. 90s. It gets so hot that like February during the rainy season, they, that's what they call it because when it rains, it pours over there. It's just like California. It doesn't rain for just one day. No, it rains for a whole week. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it'll rain for like three, four days straight. Everything's not muddy as fuck. Oh, everything is terribly muddy bro terribly muddy Fuck. but um their february and january and december is like 89 degrees really it's like it's like uh 70s 70s 80s 90s yeah but it to us it's so cold because the summer is so hot yeah and then like you that's like their low point during the day like in the summertime their lowest point is like 95 Jesus. and that's at like you know, butt crack morning and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Three o'clock in the morning. Something yeah, like, yeah. Like, you, you know, you're waking up for a shift and whatever. It's like 95 degrees, but you're somehow cold. <laughs> yeah. And it, the wear and tear from the weather, it, that plays mind games on you. Then you have the whole situation, you know, you're in a, you know, you're in a, another country. Lord knows what's going to happen at that point. And then, you know, you don't know if you're a target for somebody, right? Yes, Exactly. Like me, I got lucky. You know, I did a, I did a uh, convoy or two. You know, I went out in the helicopters and all other stuff, but I was mainly behind the wire. Mm. So pretty much what it is, I stayed pretty much on camp. Oh, okay. Uh, I was a, uh, what's the name? Communications guy. Dealt mostly with fiber, telephones, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> setting up the, the CLC, the CAC. <laughs> the, uh, the words are stupid okay the cock yeah the, the uh how did you handle the the coc the cock uh well well it was already pretty much set up uh it's the uh the hell is it so, something operation center I yeah. think, oh combat operation center there you go it's all coming back to me now <laughs> yeah it's all coming back yeah, yeah the combat operation center or the cock yeah yeah um it was already set up because you know Obviously, other people were there before us, mm-hmm. so we didn't really have to do anything. So we were just maintenance, you know, little upgrades here and there. So secondhand cock, 
Yes. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hand me down. Hand me down, cock. <laughs> no, that's cool. But no, but but still, like uh, on a serious note, though, right? I mean, we got to put a little bit of light into it, right? Mm-hmm. A little, little, little funny in there. But uh, um, but no, it is. It's a, you know, it's scary. Like you're still out there. Like you don't know if it. If, you're still in the in the cross in the you're line of fire. It's still in, there. You're still in a country where you know you're not really welcomed mm-hmm. by a large group of people because the natives, like seventy five, eighty percent of the natives, are really friendly. Yeah, they're really chill, really mm-hmm. chill people. I, you know, I I got to know a few of them. Um, I have pictures up on my Facebook with uh, you know guys that uh, they would do digging. They uh, they were digging for like this contractor company for uh, like power because they were trying to installize like a like a uh, energy type area. Yeah. So they were putting power lines, and I got to be there to oversee it because we have underground fiber lines. You know, you can't hit the fiber lines because then our com goes down. You know, we we got to fix it. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm there overseeing it, and you know, you get you get to know the guys. You know, it's it's pretty much the same crew. For you know, for a while, you know, some guys change out every now and then, but it's for the most part the same guys. So you know, they were they were real chill. It was you know, it was very weird to see the guy. You know, he has a bucket load of dirt in a, in the excavator, just stops, turns it off, and then goes down. You know, he does his prayers and stuff, and I'm just like, all right, yeah. And I'm like, what the hell, man? It's almost lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> now you gotta wait. Yeah, and it's like you know. We don't really understand what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So it, it kind of was a shock at first. But, you know, once, once you get used to it, once you understand, you know, what's going on, everything's like, all right, hey, hey, isn't it your time? Oh, when the sun hits this. It's almost there, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's almost there. You know, you, you get to lighten up, the, yeah. you know, the mood and stuff. You know, you get to be friendly with different people. So that's that's kind of cool. Now, the thing is, <clears throat> when I was there, there was a there was a certain individual um <clears throat> that worked on a base in i believe it was a camp um i forgot where it was it was in like it was like northeast of where we were mm-hmm. and um <clears throat> he was working for like a contractor like just like what how i would be with these guys he's working over there and apparently he stole a rifle or some shit and shot up a whole chow hall. Oh, he, shit. he killed like 20 people before they, before they got him. So it's just like, you know, you got to keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah. Luckily, you know, I didn't have that problem because, you know, the guys around me were so cool. And then the, the gentleman who ran like the, the crew, you know, he's like some white dude from Texas, you know, real Southern type. Yeah. Uh, Straight up business guy. No, not really. He was actually oh. really chill. Oh, yeah. It was weird. I never really met somebody from Texas who was really chill. Because <laughs> most of the I feel from... like they're all chill, Texas. Really? Yeah, like I feel like they're all just chill. I've I've just never I've, met I've... anybody from Texas who was like everyone I met. They're like uptight, you know, bi- you know, straight up business, yeah. you know, you know, protect your own. Like you know, you, you got to have a certain way of looking. Yeah. Nah, this guy was nothing like that. Like he had, he had, he definitely had a certain way of looking, you know, straight up five gallon hat, mm. belt buckle, you know, tight Levi jeans with the cowboy boots and stuff. So, you know, he looked like he was from Texas. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was weird. I'm like, yeah, I'm from New York. We don't see any of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's none of that there. And I'm just like, God, where is he from? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, you know, he introduced himself. He, yeah, he turned out to be really cool. He introduced to the crew and stuff. There was like, there was a guy from India. There was a couple of natives and stuff. And uh, they were all chill. They were all cool. They all spoke English, too. I was like, hold on, hold on a second here, man. Yeah. What the hell's going on? Yeah. You know, I'm expecting to be a like, language barrier, you know, using using hand. These guys are all having full-on conversations with me. You know what? I, uh, I'll show you later. Yeah. I have a picture. It's me and, like, there's, like, four of the, four of the guys. We're just chilling. It's right after they finished their dig. Yeah. And it was really cool because... <clears throat> This is right at the beginning when I first got there. This is probably October. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, it was really cool that, you know, we all just gelled just like that. You know, we were all chill. We were all uh, chill and stuff. You know, when the, when the native was, you know, 
he's backing out his back hole over the ditch and stuff. And like, you know, this is not something you would normally see here. Yeah. And it very dangerous. And, you know, here I am, you know, Hey, bring it, bring this down, lift up your back end and then push, push yourself over it. So he's, he's over there doing that. I'm over here spotting them and stuff. You have the other guys over there giving them hand signals and stuff. You got it across. No problem. Like first try, I was like, Man, you see what you can do when you put your mind to something and you team up with people. When you team up, yeah. When you team up with people. Put aside all that other bullshit and just kind of get together exactly. for one one cause, one thing, you know. Yeah. And do exactly. it. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was kind of cool. But um, yeah, getting back to it, yeah. So you have that whole the chow hall, um, what's the name? And then uh there was like there was problems in Marja and stuff. And I I eventually went to Marja too, so mm. That was a whole nother, you know, that was a whole nother story right there. But it's just that, all this stuff like just builds up. It's like mm-hmm. added stress. Yeah, yeah. It's added stress. But so do you guys ever get to express yourselves like to like release yourself from all that? Or do you just remember we use that analogy about bottling that shit in and then just, you know, we don't talk about it and we continue the project that we have at hand and and, and move forward. Or do you guys get to, like, is there a therapist you guys could talk to out there? Like, how, how do you... you know? uh, well, I mean, I talk with a therapist now. I see your... Now, like, but not out there. It's just... Out there, you have the chaplain. He's like the the religious um, pastor, mm-hmm. I guess you could say. And uh, he he's, you know, he's with the unit. So that's like his main job, you know, keep your religion, you know, intact. You know, if you have anything, you know, you can always talk to the, to the chaplain and this and that. But... I was in a unit where, you know, don't be a bitch. <laughs> I was, but are most units like that though? Right? Like, no, actually, I thought that, but there's a lot of them that aren't. Really? There's a there's a lot of them, like especially in the air wing, the mm-hmm. air wing units. They're real chill. Um, combat engineers, they're real chill. Like they're, just, you know, they just have a job to do. Yeah. You know, you do it. Me, I got stuck in an infantry unit. Mm-hmm. Don't be a bitch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're all in the same, we're all in the same boat, you know? But it's that thing where it's like, you know, if you're the one that goes, hey, uh, let me, let me, uh, let me set up an appointment with the chaplain. It's like, well, what's wrong with you, man? Why are you being a little bitch? Is that the kind of oh, attitude? No, no, oh, no, 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 they, no, they, they encourage that. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, they encourage that. It's just pride. Mm. Pride, you know, sets in. It's like, if I do this, you know, I'm going to hear about this later. Or if I do that, you know, I'm going to hear about you know, or I'm going to, you know, it's not going to end well for me, this or that, you know, you know, psychologically wise, it's not going to end well. Cause, you know, people make fun of me. Yeah. Or this, or that. You have all that in the back of your mind. So your pride kicks in like, you know what? You don't need to do this because you, you're yourself. Just, you know, tell your brain to, you know, kick it out. Yeah, you don't yeah. need that memory mm-hmm. or you don't, you don't need to know what happened here. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to worry about this. You don't need to worry. Kind of like drinking. <laughs> just like drinking yeah you know you, you drink your pain away almost but you know you don't have beer in afghanistan <laughs> yeah it was terrible they but had, they had becks oh man they had there? becks becks the the alcoholic drink uh, no drink? it was the non-alcoholic oh, drink wait i thought becks was alcoholic unless Is they it? have unless they have a not i don't know i don't know i've never had becks i don't know i, I don't drink becks they i don't know if it was drink, non or it was terrible it might have been yeah it was terrible well i'm, Maybe I'm there pretty was, sure it was like it was like a half a half uh there's probably like a like three percent alcohol or some shit no i think it was less than that, oh my God. i think it was less but it was it had probably was a non-alcoholic disgusting thing i've ever had yeah and i had i only had that once on my birthday because uh the fucking my squad they, they they all bought it they all bought me one and it was like a dollar yeah so they all they all bought me one and like we're all having fucking cheers and shit and then I'm just drinking. I'm like, God, this is the worst thing I've ever drank. <laughs> and I've drank some terrible things before. <laughs> I've 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 had a Kawama. Uh, Kawama is a Salvadorian beer, and you know, no offense, to you got Salvadorians out there that like it, but that shit is trash, bro. It's really? not good. Kawama. It's, it has a little uh, turtle on the label. Okay. It's don't ever drink that. Okay. Yeah. And, but but I was gonna say Moosehead is one of those like really cheap la- lagers. And it's not even that bad. I mean, I'll drink it if it's nice and cold. If it's as soon as and you got to drink uh, the Moosehead, you got to drink it fast. Moosehead is a Canadian beer. And you got to drink that fucking thing fast. Really? Because as soon as it starts to go a little bit like room temp, get the fuck out of here. You can't drink that. Yeah. 
So anyone out there likes open, inquiring, so you can't put it back and then get it no, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta drink that shit fast. So moosehead on a, on, a, on a summer day, like you drink moosehead. But uh, you know, going back to to being out there though, is there a cons- like the, uh, a whole like a dialogue of like you don't you know you, it's taboo to almost like talk about or like the whole you talking about the whole pride thing like not to talk to the chaplain right because you don't do it like. You know, we you know we just drink it away, or or we just put it in the back of your head. Like, is there that kind of dialogue going on within the camps? Actually, I mean, as far as I know, because I know I there was a couple people who were you know had troubled you know past before the Marines, and then you know you put them in a very stressful environment, it brings out the worst in you. Yeah, I'm well, thinking like Full Metal Jacket, right? The opening scene of Full Metal Jacket, we blows this fucking brains out with a shotgun oh that's a whole nother story but no it's kind of not like that okay um there was a guy i'm not gonna say his name because frankly i just don't remember too many concussions yeah well i wouldn't say his name anyways (laughs) um he uh i know he would always ask like on field ops you know the chaplain comes with us and he would always he would always like he would always ask me he goes hey what would you say if uh if I go see the chaplain, I need to talk to him. I'm like, then go. Why are you asking me? I don't, you don't need my permission. Yeah. And he was a higher rank than me. I was a PFC at this time. He's a Lance. So he's one step up on me. Yeah. But we were, you know, we were junior Marines. So it was, um, you know, I'm, I'm just like weirded out by, it was very random. Like the first time he asked me and it was very random, but you know, I didn't think of it as an 18 year old kid. I wasn't thinking, you know, oh, shit, he's been here longer. So maybe he knows the reason why he's asking me mm-hmm. is because mm-hmm. of, you know, the what we said before, you know, don't be a bitch about it. Yeah. So I wasn't thinking that. I'm just like, in my head, I'm trying, like, I'm rattled. Like, why the hell did he just ask me that? Yeah. And then, like, you know, he would ask, he would ask me, like, every, like, personal questions and stuff and this and that. I would give him some honest to God answers, you know. And, you know, he actually, like, he he enjoyed it. You know, kind of like we would have a conversation like we're doing right now. Yeah. Just just natural, you know, very, like, he would ask me, like, something like, uh, what, uh, what would I do, you know, if, uh, you know, I'm having trouble with this or I'm having trouble with this person? And I'd be like, honestly, you know, the way I do it is, you know, I, I kind of deal with stuff head on. But, you know, I, it doesn't really work for everybody. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, I would tell him, I was like, why don't you just, you know, go on your phone, go on Google, and then just type in what you told me and see, you know, there's WebMD. WebMD has stuff for that. You know, Google, I'm sure, will have an answer for it. You know, you'll find everything on Google. Google knows everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my trademark saying back in the day. Google knows everything. Google knows everything. <laughs> Well, now it knows too much because it, it, it gives like four four different sides to to one story. Oh my you know, god! Like, so. Yes, yeah. Google knows too much. It knows too much. Back up from Google. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but um, yeah. So I would tell him stuff like that, and you know, it got to a point where you know we're in Afghanistan, and um, his uh, his vehicle had gotten hit by an IED. Mm. This is well, like probably November barely like two months in him it's him he's a radio op so it was him and another guy along with like you know some other people from the unit yeah and um you know i don't know how bad i don't know if he was injured i don't think he was injured because you know they they all came back right on time but you know the vehicle was really fucked up yeah and these are some secure fucking vehicles like Armored cars have nothing on the the MRAPs. They have nothing on the MRAPs. Like these things are like explosion proof, fucking mm. bulletproof. Anything you can think of, they are proofed. <laughs> like seriously, <clears throat> like m- maybe C C four will fuck it up. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure that's what fucked it up. Because they have like a little, it's like a little V on the bottom, protects the transmission. Mm. You know the axles and stuff. So. You have this ginormous steel truck with um gunner at the top. You know, it can hold about 12 people in the back. Damn. Two in the front, you know, the driver and then the co-driver or the co- what the passenger, whatever you, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And then underneath there, these like probably like 
tractor trailer type tires. Mm-hmm. And um, underneath the thing, there's this V, solid steel V that goes from the front of the truck all the way to the rear. Mm-hmm. And so it's actually designed like that to absorb an explosion. So it would, when go, it, like, it would go bam and then right back down. Pretty much what it would, what it would do is like the force of it, mm-hmm. it would like fire shrapnel. It would run off the V. Mm. So, so it's like this and it would run off and out. So it wouldn't go uh, up into yeah. the, mm-hmm. into the truck. It yeah. wouldn't go up. It wouldn't blow a hole in the truck. It would just fly off and, you know, with the V just go outward. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, when that truck came back, I don't think I've ever seen, I've seen some drunk driver cars. I've seen some pretty, you know, messed up cars. That truck looked destroyed. Wow. A steel truck. Steel. Yeah. Like it's got to be the heaviest truck in the world. Hmm. Seriously. And yeah, that truck took a beating. The V was like halfway melted off. Jesus. The other half was already torn off. You had the axles was completely broken. So they, and that's like you thinking you're in the most safest vehicle out there, right? Like yeah. the most safe. Nothing can go wrong while I'm in this this fucking truck. Oh yeah, oh yes, Jesus! Like nothing. That had to be like it. It had to because steel doesn't melt. It melts at like twenty one hundred degrees or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. So there's no way that melted like that. That just had to be the pure uh, momentum of a bomb. Yeah. That chunked it off. And it's like, fuck, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what if they were just in a Humvee? Mm-hmm. That Humvee would have been dead. Jeez. The Humvee would have been gone. blown to Disintegrated. Slivers. Disintegrated. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So if, you know, luckily, you know, Uncle Sam was generous enough to, you know, make some stuff like that. Yeah. You know, actually give a shit about people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, some talking shit about Uncle Sam. I was, I was, I was, I was feeling that. And I, I did feel it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. like, God, is Uncle Sam of yours? <laughs> <laughs> Mine too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. Man. Only once a year when I have to pay him. Huh? I said only once a year when I have to pay him, <laughs> Uncle yeah, Sam. Know, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, he was he was in that truck, and then, like, you know, maybe about a week later, you know, he, he, he hey, bro, I need to talk to the chaplain. You know, it's really bad. You know, this and this dude didn't sleep after that. Who would? Yeah. <laughs> Who would sleep after that? Hell, I don't think I would sleep for the rest of my life after some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, so he go, hey, bro, I'm, I don't know, like, what would the, what would the, you know, what would, what, what would people say? I'm like, honestly, bro, who gives a shit? Yeah. Fuck them. They're not doing with what you're doing. They weren't in the truck. Yeah. He goes, yeah, but some other guys were, and they're fine. I'm like, yeah, they're fine, but you're not. Like you need to take care of yourself. Yeah, you know, like just go talk to the chaplain. Who who cares? Hell, tell him I said it. I that was back when I was very belligerent and I didn't give a fuck about people. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was very belli- I was a belligerent asshole, yeah. and I didn't give a fuck about people at that point. So um, yeah, but I told him like, who cares, bro? Yeah, just go, go to take you. care of yourself. Yeah. Go to the chaplain. Like you know, he went to the chaplain, and uh, you know, he would go to the chaplain like once a week or so pretty much on Sundays and uh, laid out his excuse would be, you know, I'm going to church Yeah, yeah. because yeah. they would still hold church services. Uh-huh. And the good thing about it was our master guns, top guy in communications. He was big time religious dude, mm. big time. So he was there at every single, you know, um, mass, 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 yeah, yeah. mass, I guess you could say mm-hmm. he was there at every single one of them. worship. I don't know what, it, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Not a big time church guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, I'm religious. I'm just not big into churches. Mm-hmm. Very personal reasons. I really don't care about people from churches. They're hypocritical. Mm, yeah. yeah. Very bad experience. Were you an altar boy? No. Okay, good. So you didn't get No, touched? I grew up Christian. Oh, Christian. Okay. Yeah, I grew up Christian. Yeah. So, yeah. Very hypocritical people. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, those, that's, that's what happens when you have those kind of organizations. You know, when there's... It's they get these power trips and then they start thinking that they're the high and mighty. Yes, and this is the way it is. Yes, and then yes. they try to tell you that you're doing wrong. Oh my god, because, you're hitting it right in the nose, bro. Yeah. Oh my god. But yes. that's every 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 religion has that. Yes. So <laughs> if you if you take so if you take what the what the physical church is, take that away and just follow everything else, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. 
You don't Which need- is exactly what me and the wife do. Yeah. We don't need to go to a church where we have to give the church money. Like a tithe is an offering. You're you're donating your time yeah. or you're donating your money. You know, yes, it's it's a blessing. Yes, you know, it's in the Bible and stuff, but it does not state in the Bible you must give a certain amount of money yeah. on this specific date every single time. It doesn't say that. No. I know. I read it twice. <laughs> so I know it doesn't say it in there. And, you know, you go to these churches and, oh, they're passing around the tithe thing. If you don't put anything in there, everyone's right, right. They start judging staring at you. Who's the one that didn't put anything? Yeah. It's like, fuck you, man. Yeah. Who are you? Well, you know what? There's some people that like it. They need that. There's some people that need that in their life. Every 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 week they need to go to some place like that yeah. to worship. And that's fine. That's okay. Oh, Just, yeah. But don't judge me because I don't. You know yes. what I mean? That's, yes. that's the only thing. Yes. Religion. To me, religion is the biggest hypocritical trademark of this yeah. country it's wow. got to be it's it, it's religion is the biggest oh it's not the big it's the second biggest debatable thing about the country oh, the first one is politics huh? yes yeah. i was just, I was just the, gonna say that those are the two things that i say that we're not gonna talk about on this show yeah <laughs> and here we are <laughs> but it's because it's like it's hard to not you know talk about it when, yeah, it just comes up when it comes like mental mental health and stuff yeah you kind of you kind of need religion yeah you need it but like people, you need it. faith. Yeah, no, that yeah, yeah. You need faith. Yeah, religion, you know, is just it's just an excuse to it's just another little title, huh? It's just another title. Yes, there you go. It's another name, another title. <laughs> but I mean, faith is what it really comes down to. Like, yes, it, you know, because you can be faithful to a certain religion or a certain belief or whatever, right? But mm-hmm. the religion part is just another. Again, hello, my name is right. It's just a title. Yeah, yeah. that's so, all it is. Yeah. That's all. It's just a name tape. Yeah, that's all it is. But um, yeah. So getting back to it, yeah. So he would go, and you know, Master Guns was there, and you know, Master Guns, real Master Guns, uh, what, Wilson, Master Guns Wilson. Never forget. I that love guy. that name, Master Guns Wilson. Master Guns. Well, no, that that's that's the rank. No, I know, but it's just the name with with the Wilson after Master oh, yeah. Guns Wilson. It's yeah, just... Master Guns Wilson. I think his first name was Jeffrey. I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah, th- this dude is ginormous. He's six eight. Big black dude, jacked, like, and he goes to. He, he's like the most like. He's like a big teddy bear. Mm-hmm. Like he has a deep voice, very intimidating voice, very yeah. stern, firm. But he's like a big teddy bear. Like, yeah, really cool. If he knows you're in trouble with something, you know whether it's like you know you're like you're really messed up in the head or you're falling in alcohol or whatever. He's the type of person that will unfuck you. Mm. Marine terms. <laughs> yeah, I'm still but, trying to think about. <laughs> hmm. he, he, so he was the type in of person that will like go out of his. Obviously, you know, there's a whole chain of command yeah. before it even gets to him. But if he notices on the spot, he'll he'll find something to fix it mm. immediately. Yeah, he's like he's that type of person. Uh, my old staff sergeant lives out here. Staff sergeant Rob. He lives down in uh, he lives by Temecula area, mm-hmm. and he uh he actually said he ran into uh, Master Guns Wilson at Walmart down there. Well, he's in Cali. Oh shit! I didn't know that much. Nice. Yeah, but yeah, Master Guns Wilson. That dude was rock solid. Man. Yeah, I miss that dude. Really good. He, we had some great talks because mm-hmm. uh, you know he would always be with the the colonel and stuff doing doing um, like meetings and stuff. And there I am, you know, being a little wireman, a little wire dog, you know, running phones and you know hooking hooking up you know the little cisco phones you ever yeah, see those yeah, yeah. the little voip phones mm-hmm. voip. You, know, you just you just pick up the thing, you press one button and it, it already goes to yeah. a certain phone number mm-hmm. yeah i'm hooking those up and stuff and you know i got to a point where i was out there smoking cigars with the 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 five highest ranking people in the damn unit. dude and i'm that. out there smoking cigars on a first name basis nice like who the hell would think about that yeah that that That's helped out dope. a lot. That's pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie, that like being in a shitty situation as that was, like that that helps you out a lot. Yeah. Now you're you're sitting there smoking a a cigar with the colonel, the sergeant major, the gunner, your master guns, and then another master guns from another section. Yeah. Like you're you're sitting there smoking with them, and they're calling you by your first name. These dudes have like 20, 25 years of experience yeah. in the Marines, and and you're. Me, I was barely in for a year and a half, maybe, and we're 
And this was this was this wasn't one time. This is probably about 10, 15 oh, smokes. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> we were there for a year or so. <clears> that's 10, like a, that reminds smokes. me of a, that's like a like that scene in uh Shawshank Redemption when they're when they roof they roofed that uh that whole building up in the in the heat, but they got to drink their beers and relax and and you know, the only inmates that are drinking beers and then the I think I did see that. Movie. Yeah, I think that reminds I did. me of that. Yeah, it reminds me of that. But dude, I mean, it's it's crazy. You know what? Let's take a quick little break. Yeah, we'll take a quick little break. We'll be right back. So we're back, you guys. Uh, you guys just heard a quick little teaser of the Grind Time video coming out. It's coming pre- out soon. Uh, it should be getting the last little bit. We're gonna finish finish the shots tomorrow, so it should be released by next week. Should there you be. go. Don't quote me. Should be. It should be. So we'll <laughs> see. But but yeah, that's a quick little teaser. You guys make sure you guys Working look out for that. Wrenching all my plants. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens all the time, right? <laughs> Uh, no, um, so going back to what we're, we're talking about, um, just the situation, right? Like your personal experience with dealing with mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot that goes into all that shit. I mean, we're, we we started from from going, you know, living a you know boy, you know, a young man in New York to another a whole new country, mm-hmm. and then now you're forget about New York because I don't even know if did you ever go back to New York after the Marines or did you come straight to SoCal and that's it like this well, is where you started I was actually stationed in SoCal so I was in Camp Pendleton from 2010 I came here actually it was a year Wednesday or a year holy fuck it was uh <laughs> 12 years ago yeah, 12 years wait was it 12 2009 on the 24th on November 24th was when I first came to California and went to 29 Palms for my uh, comm school. Mm-hmm. That's where my comm school is. So from November 24th all the way through the rest of my, you know, my Marine term, I was in California. I went from 29 Palms to Camp Pendleton. Mm. Served down my my four years there. And then I've been here ever since. I, went, I met my wife. Um, like I said, in the last time we, we met, I, I uh, met her when I was uh, – I got back from deployment. This was 2012 December, coming up on nine years with her. Yeah, yeah. You were playing. I remember you were playing video games. You weren't really giving too much about her. Yeah, yeah. And then she yep. started talking sports. And I'm like, there okay, you go. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you go. All right, you remember the story. I remember the story. <laughs> yeah, my favorite, my favorite couple. <laughs> of course, I remember the story. Yeah. But yeah. no, um, so yes, again, so from New York to a whole other country, Afghanistan. Over here in, in SoCal, it's a whole. It's just a change after change after change after change. You had to make so many adjustments, and then, mm-hmm. but what does that do to someone's psyche, right? What is that? You know, how do you get I after mean, all that? The, I mean, you look at the shirt scenery, you're wearing, right? The change in scenery actually isn't as bad as everyone makes it seem. I am a stickler for change. I cannot. You can ask my wife. I hate when people things are misplaced in the house. Yeah, I, I leave things in very specific spots because I have a terrible memory. So I know I'll forget where it is if it if it's moved. I'm the same way. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a stickler. So like I, I hate change, but you know, going from New York where I was living to going to the Marines, it was actually a really good change for me. It helped me become me. Couldn't I couldn't become me if I was still there. Mm. So you know the change was cool. And obviously, you know, I knew Afghanistan wasn't going to be forever. Yeah. So I wasn't too worried about it, per se. You know, there's always the, you know, there's always the doubt in your mind on, you know, what if they don't, you know, they don't show up. Obviously, you know, you kind of know everything in the military is by the book. Mm. Everything is textbook. It's by the, the time, everything. So 
you know, there is that little bit of doubt, but it's not much. And, you know, when we got, when we came back on September 6th, 2011, you know, everything went back to normal, you know, we're in California, you know, I literally flew all the way across the world. It is round. <laughs> we when we when we took off, we took off from March Air Force Base, it right, Moreno Valley. Yeah. We went up to Washington. We picked up an army. I, I believe it was like an army unit. We picked them up. Then we flew to Maine. From Maine, we flew to Belgium. From Belgium, we flew to Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan to Afghanistan. And then when we flew back, we flew from Afghanistan to Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan to Alaska. Alaska to, to California. Yeah. So I literally flew all the way, all the way around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took a little bit longer than 180 days, but yes. Damn. <laughs> Referencing the Jackie Chan movie. Around oh, the world in, or uh, what was that? Around the world in, was it 80 days? Oh, fuck. I don't know. I you forgot. got me on that one, dude. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. But yeah, it, it took a lot longer than that. But yeah. yes. <laughs> yes, the world is round. Yes. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of hate from that. I know. There's, some, there's so many conspiracy theorists out there that are like, no, it's not, you know? But whatever let's not even touch yeah, that. Let's not, yeah, that's let's, a whole nother that's, that's a whole, whole nother episode yes that's if a you're whole willing, other episode if you're willing to have that conversation we'll get the right people <laughs> on here for it because i'm like fuck that it's brown yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah but but no yeah so i mean again going back to it, like when you come out here and you're done right like so after you're 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 already retired right as far as like the service yes done yes what is it called when you're when, when you when you're done with it what is it called uh, you're just a veteran a veteran okay yeah you're if you're, you're active duty or your reserve and then once you fill out your you know your time you're a veteran mm -hmm. you know you're i don't know i wouldn't say retired because i only did four well technically i did eight years mm -hmm. the, the the four years reserve afterwards but um i wouldn't say retired I'd just say veteran yeah you're a veteran discharged you know? yeah honor Honorable discharge. Honor definitely that's honorable that's discharge. exactly what I was looking for. That word. Yeah. Honorable discharge. Okay. Yes. So when that when that happens, um, now you're a civilian, right? Yes. So so the transition to that, how how was that? There? That was okay. that was that was the you know the real because I was coming off probably my lowest point in life at the. I want to say the beginning of 2012 till about September, mm -hmm. you know, I'm coming back and, you know, there was some life changing things that happened in Afghanistan that, you know, you're just never going to forget. And, you know, you come back, you know, you come back here, everything's supposed to go to normal. That's, they make movies about that. Everything goes right. back to normal. And yeah, not many people seen Rambo, you know, <laughs> dude is a trained killer. And, you know, he, Every, every in every movie you see him, he has flashbacks. Yeah, that's literally how it is. Wow, like I couldn't sleep. I was a, I don't even think raging alcoholic is the word. Mm -hmm. My schedule would be, you know, I'd go to work, I I'd be off at uh well sixteen hundred four, I'd be off at four, <clears throat> go straight to the store, get a bottle of Jack Daniels be done with it by i start drinking by five i'm probably done with it by six seven o'clock fuck piss drunk and um <clears throat> you know i'll go to sleep wake up and do this all over again starting at well, five in the morning so that's it like that that's you trying to escape from something though right oh yeah because you know i was 20 when i came back mm -hmm. i wasn't 21 yet so i couldn't sleep to save my life and you know the docs you know they give you all sorts of like like ambient or whatever mm -hmm. the sleeping meds and they work for a while but my body has a tendency of getting used to everything i take well you're trained to like to be up and stay up and like nothing could phase you yeah to all of a sudden like all right now you can go see mm -hmm. <laughs> not gonna happen my friend right well no we we were all on schedules out yeah. there and uh, in Afghanistan, we were all on schedules like you know you, you work a 12-hour schedule and then you but it was the schedule. The schedule would, would be so fucked up. Like my original schedule, I would work from, uh, I believe it was like four to four mm. when I was doing the fiber. Yeah. It would be four to four, 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. Because <clears throat> they'd be digging at that time. So 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
and then I'm off for the next 12 hours from 4 a, from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. I'm off. Go to the gym, you know, whatever, do whatever, go to sleep. You can do whatever at that point. So you get, <clears throat> I had that schedule. Then I go on a regular, to my regular section, you know, doing that. And that was, uh, I want to say it was 12 to 12. Mm. I want to say it was 12 noon to 12 in the morning. Yeah. Still 12 hours. Still 12 hours. Not too bad. Yeah. But then, you know, I was on base defense. They call it BDOC, base defense operations command or something like that. And <clears throat> I was on shift for eight hours, mm. but it was 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. Mm. And that's a very stressful, you know, situation because yeah. you are literally the last line of defense of the camp. Yeah. So, you know, you got to be awake. You can't go to sleep and even though your body is telling you, hey, I'm tired. Let's go. You're so used to the other schedules before. Yes. And- so that's added stress. Yeah. So, you know, you know, flashback all the way, you know, or fast forward, you know, you're, you're going to sleep and, you know, you're trying to go to sleep at like eight, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night. And it's just not happening. And then, you know, when, when I finally do get to sleep, I'm, you know, flashbacks or night tremors, waking up sweating. It's like freaking 30 degrees outside Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're waking up sweating and stuff and. It's just like, you know, there, there's a lot of wear and tear on not being able to sleep. So that, you know, coupled with other, you know, personal stupid shit that happened in my life, you know, I was at rock bottom. Then, you know, I, 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 I meet my wife and all that other stuff. I finish out my, my time and active duty. I get out and then, you know, I had a plan. Actually, I had two plans. Mm. And, you know, for when I got out, because they, they make sure, you know, when you get out, you have, you know, you have a plan, you have a backup plan, you know, so on and so forth. They make sure you, so I had a plan which got derailed. Then, okay, I'll switch, you know, switch gears, go to my, my backup plan. Everything was set in place, but then that got derailed. And this is a matter of weeks. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm like, fuck. And isn't I already put in, you know, my my discharge, you know, I'm I'm already getting out and both of my plans are derailed. Yeah. Does it matter <laughs> and, how they got derailed at all at, at at this point? Uh at this point not really. Okay. It was um I was supposed to go to school for fiber. Mm. Oh, I wanted okay. to get certified mm-hmm. for the fiber school. And it was actually a local down by it was down by Camp Pendleton. It wasn't too far away from the base. Yeah. And it was it was ran by uh I forgot if it was ran. I think it was ran by like a veteran, you know, it was like a veteran operated type thing. But that school actually got like it closed for yeah. some reason. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the reason was, but it closed. Then my second one was um fuck, I forgot what my second my second it was something relating to my job in the Marines. Um, I want to say it was like a Cisco type thing, like a, no. like a course. Yeah, it's a three month course, something like it was something like that. And they wanted instead of using my GI Bill like I was supposed to do, like how I set it up, instead of using my GI Bill, they didn't accept the GI Bill. They only wanted like twenty thousand dollars, and I'm like, I don't have twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> okay, yeah. Fuck, where the fuck am I gonna come up with this? Like this is why money? I joined so that I can get my shits paid for. Yeah. So and you know, I I did some reckless spending. There's a reason why I didn't have the twenty thousand. I was I was only nineteen at the time, so yeah, yeah. I, I was very stupid. Yeah. I was young. Not too many finance managers in the service for you guys? Not really. Yeah. Not really. So, you <clears> know, <throat> I had two two stone cold plans that got derailed. Yeah. So the stress on top of my unit, which, you know, I had some very big political problems with, you know, with the leadership there. It was mm-hmm. terrible. Mm-hmm. They were idiots. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so I had, you know, I had nothing and I was already getting out and there was nothing I can do. I just had to figure out on the fly 
a way to, you know, to figure, you know, I had to figure this shit out yeah. really fast. I didn't have a lot of time. Sink or swim. Yes. Sink or swim. There you go. And, um, you know, I was living in my car by 2007 Mitsubishi Eclipse. Wow. A guy who's six, three, I was probably a two, probably about two fifteen at that time. Two ten, two fifteen. That's a new body style, right? <clears throat> like the 2007 was, it wasn't the fast and the fierce one. It was the new body style. Yeah, new body style. Yeah, very so small, little, very compact. Yeah, still, still beefed up more than the other one, but yeah. Oh, the yeah. 2004 was that little one. Yeah, that was the, that was a stretched out one. Yeah. That, that one was the I could have fit in the stretched out one. This yeah. one was a very smaller one, compact one. Yes, and it was a drop top too. Yeah. So oh. yeah, so yeah, I uh, I wound up spending about four or five weeks doing that. You know, I'd shower in the fucking gas station bathroom. And Call all that. It. I never told my wife what I was doing <laughs> till she figured it out. Oh, really? Yeah, she figured it out. She goes, where are you, where are you staying at? You know, let, let me stay with you. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh you sure you want to do that? She goes, yeah, you know, it'd be nice. You know, you got to go for your interview tomorrow. You know, you know, uh, we can go eat, whatever. You know, we can chill, relax, you know, watch TV. And I'm just like. She has no idea. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm just like, um, you can't, you know, uh, I just made up some, like some whole story. Like, uh, my, you know, my cousin's a stickler, this and that. And she goes, your cousin, you never told me you had family out here. I'm like, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) They didn't teach me how to lie. (laughs) Yeah. I was a terrible liar, bro. I don't lie. Like I'm not a liar. So it's like when I come up with like stories like they're just very they're very observant like yeah. or not observant um like you could see right through them yeah so it's just like uh so i finally came out with it and she goes wait you're living in your car um she goes how long have you been doing that and i'm like since i got out she goes what the fuck seriously and then between her and then her brother crow you know she talked to her dad and all that and then she got she she got me to move in with uh with them over in Pomona, so you know that was a little bit of stress you know relieved. Mm-hmm. I still needed to find something to do. Right. You know you can't survive you know like that. So long story you know long story short, I end up with a job in. It was like a security thing for like AT and T. Really good job, and. I had the job. I went, I worked there for like three weeks until my background check came back with a, I don't know how to, a very bad background. I'm like, a bad background? Yeah. I've never had a bad background. Apparently, something that happened in 2012 came up on my background where an officer a police officer in Amityville where I, you know, I lived mm-hmm. <clears throat> was a piece of shit. Fucking scumbag gave me a ticket for failure to use my turn signal. Now that was a very proper way of saying what he really wanted to say, mm-hmm. which, you know, he was a piece of shit. Just, you know, do, do the math. He was a piece of shit. Yeah. So my, my ex was black, my friend was black and you know, I had my, it was me, my brother, my sister, my friend and my ex, we were outside of a house looking at my friend's new car. He had just got a, a a Audi. I think it was an Audi. It was tight. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice car, you know? So we're all looking at it and you know, he's a mechanic, so he builds up cars and he, you know, he beats them up yeah. and stuff. So he's showing me all the stuff that he did to the car and this and that. Cool. You know? And I see the cop, the cop car come this way very slowly. And I'm like, Oh, this is going to be a bad night. Mm. So long story short, we leave. And as soon as I, as soon as I get to the light and I make the right, keep in mind, my turn signal is still on. He pulls me over for failure to use a turn signal. <laughs> yes. Yes, that actually happened. Wow. And it was a very bad night. It was a very, very bad night because 
I had not gotten a ticket at all, ever. Actually, that is only one of two tickets I've ever gotten in since I've been driving. Damn. I got a speeding one. I deserved that. <laughs> <laughs> I deserved that one, but <clears throat> did you get mouthy with the guy or what when he pulled you over? You're like, what uh, the hell, well, dude? What the, what's your he fucking got, He got mouthy with us. Very personal. He was a piece of shit. Fat motherfucker. Yeah. And uh tell me what you really want to think <laughs> <laughs> Right? Uh he got um like you know, I'm fresh off a of deployment. So yeah. I have all this shit running in my head. Fresh off a combat deployment to Afghanistan. Yeah. And I got to deal with this. And it was really bad because I was at a point where I could not control my emotions. Yeah. So, you know, he's over there, you know, pretty much talking shit. And me being in the Marines, I joined the Marines to talk shit. <laughs> oh, there's a shirt like that, bro. I want to get it. There's a shirt that said, I joined the Marines to talk shit. Is there really a shirt like that? There really is a shirt like that, bro. There really is a shirt. <laughs> And uh, so I start going going back and forth with this guy. And, you know, after a while, you know, whatever, um, he uh, he's patting us down. And we're like, what the fuck? Seriously? You know, whatever. I don't got nothing to hide. I don't care. Whatever. So he passed me down. Nothing. He passed my friend down. Nothing. He passed my brother down. And his fucking, his... Uh, partner there you go yeah his partner is pulling some shit out of his pocket and like acting like he had a brother i said motherfucker i saw your ass and my phone caught your ass too I was, oh you're I, was, recording I was videoing it yeah my phone caught your ass too this was the fat one yeah there was two there was a skinny one who's he, he was a scumbag and then the fat one was the real piece of shit yeah fat motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> and um <clears throat> So he's over there trying to fucking, he's trying to fucking put some shit on my brother. Yeah. And I was like, "Uh uh-uh, you ain't pulling that shit. Not today. I got your ass and my phone got you. Yeah. And then he comes out to my face, like, like, right out to me. What are you going to do about it? I And my brother almost got, my brother almost took the fall for that one. He got, he said, who the fuck are you talking to? Yeah. My brother just got back from a combat deployment to Afghanistan. And he he said some shit that it made me snap. It completely made me snap. He said, "Oh, your brother's just a fucking piece of shit." Like the rest of them, what was he a what was he a chef? And oh, oh bro, when <laughs> not I to took, knock on any chefs in the in the Marines, but oh no no, there's some good yeah, ones. Yeah. But it's like I was on a combat deployment in an infantry unit, mm-hmm. and like you know. We we talk shit, you know. We talk shit to each other. You know, it's an all male thing. Yeah. So we, we talk shit to each other on a daily. So I was trained for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> I was trained for this moment, and I joined the Marines to talk shit. I joined the Marines to talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, long story short, they just gave me the ticket, yeah. whatnot, and um, I I gave the ticket to my unit because they, you know, I called I. Right after that, I called, well, the next day, because it was, uh, this is probably about midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and I wasn't very familiar with time difference at yeah. that point. So I called the next morning, talked to my sergeant, let him know. He ran it up the chain. By the time I was back from leave, um, I was hearing it from everyone talking about, oh, you got to go for a piss test, this and that, <laughs> and, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they, and they wanted me to pay this ticket. Even though I kept saying, no, I want to, you know, I Fight didn't do it, yeah. anything wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was a rental car at that point. You know, it was, it's a rental car. And it's like, you know, I don't want any part of this. I didn't do anything wrong. I was literally, I had this turn signal on. So, but they made me pay it. So, paid the $600 or paid the, I think that, I think that one was the $250. Mm-hmm. Paid the $250. Well, done with it. Unit had the receipts. You know, my sergeant was there when I made the payment. Everyone knew I made the payment. Fast forward to 2013 when I had this job. Um, they told me that I had a failure to appear in the city of Amityville, New York, for a traffic ticket from 2012 for a failure to use a turn signal, and I almost completely lost it. Like, seriously? And I couldn't go back to my unit to ask them for the documentation. Because they were in Afghanistan again. Oh. 
So the people who were left behind were all new people who had no idea what happened. So <laughs> I was screwed. Yeah. And I lost a job making $45 an hour. Damn. It was it was the most perfect job. Like, yeah, it was, you know, it was different. It was security systems and this and that, cameras and stuff. But it wasn't any different than what I'm used to, you know, plugging in wires, right. you know, plugging in wires, stripping, you know, splicing. It wasn't any different than what I was doing. So it was the perfect job. And it just got flushed away over some shit. And then I was right back. Like, fuck, what am I going to do? Yeah. The added stress. And, you know, all that amount of stress, you know, it kind of like messed with my head. And yeah. It, 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 stress is like the biggest problem with mental health. Oh, yeah. You got to, you got to learn how to cope with stress. Mm hmm. So, you know, from that, I went, you know, I figured out, you know, how to cope with it. I figured out how to, you know, deal with my emotions. I figured out how to do all this because I didn't have any of this growing up. Yeah. I was a very. We didn't talk about it. We didn't talk about that kind of stuff. We were just like, oh, you know, yeah, brush it off to the side and yeah. move yeah. forward. But my emotions was very, very bad mm -hmm. when I was a kid. I was very, very ruthless. I was very belligerent. You know, when I got to the Marines, I was a brand new person. But by that time in the Marines, I was back to being a belligerent asshole again mm. because of all the added stress. Um, By this time, you know, I was like a brand new. When I met my wife, I was like a brand new person again. Like, you know, there's a reason to live this and that. And <clears throat> um, when I hit when I got that, it was fuck. What am I going to do? I'm back to the drawing board again. Three plants, rock solid. Everything was tight. And they all fell through. And I'm like, fuck. And then, uh, you know, she uh, she's looking for me. You know, she's looking for herself. Well, she worked at Vons at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she's looking for work for me. I'm looking for work, this and that. And then we find Time Warner Cable for, um, you know, in-home in tech. Whatever. You know, we'll do it. Let's do it. So we, we apply and this and that, I get a call, you know, I start working there and, you know, I worked there, I worked there for a year or so. Yeah. And I, I caught on to this guy who worked for source, who was a contractor for time Warner fiber splicer. Mm -hmm. I said, hell yeah, I am, you know, a really good fiber splicer. Well, so I thought I was, yeah. you know, <laughs> see, it's easy in the Marines. You know, you, you have time to do stuff. Yeah. yeah. Not here. So over here, it's all like quick, quick, quick. Get yeah. It done, get it's it like, you gotta, you gotta be on it. Like, it's like, bro, fiber is glass. Like you moving that fast, you're going to break it. Yeah. But there was just some things I didn't understand. Yeah. I was a fiber technician too, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I was a fiber technician back in when, uh, when the twin towers got hit, you know, in New York. Oh wow! I was it was that was one of like my last I think it was my last year as a fiber technician, but, but yeah, I, I was a fiber technician. Right, so I understand okay. how tedious that kind of work is. You know? Yeah, you know how stressful yes. it is. Yes. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, yeah, you got you Don't gotta be able to it. take your time and like me. You break a strand, you gotta start from back there. Yeah. That's why you get that extent. Yeah, an because extra when fucking you break it, it shatters. Oh yeah, for a while. <laughs> you, you gotta find, then you gotta find it. You yeah. know where it shatters. Yeah. Yes. And it's like, you know what? I eventually, uh, I moved to the construction side, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever. Long story short, I work at a refinery now. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything close to what I did in the Marines. Mm. And it's actually enjoyable. Yeah. You know, the, the, the drive is a stress. Mm -hmm. California traffic is terrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we talking about that. <laughs> but earlier. the job itself, you know, it's it's really easy. So mm -hmm. it, it, it it's, it's really good, you know. I'm not, I'm not going to knock the job. It's really good. But it's the fact of all the stress, all of that, you know, there was an incident in Afghanistan. I won't get into it, you know, because it's going to be a whole nother story. But there's an incident where I actually, you know, I pulled the trigger. Hmm. The gun didn't go off, obviously. I don't understand how it didn't go off. Yeah. But it didn't. So it was at that particular moment in time. It was February 2011 where... No, March 2011, 
where I, you know, I was like, all right, well, I'm here for a very specific reason. Yeah. I got to figure out what that reason is. And then soul you know, searching, huh? Tell wow. me about it, bro. Imagine doing that in the middle of Afghanistan. <clears throat> you know, your postmate is in the bathroom. Has no idea what's going on here. And, uh, you know, you, you, you just it's like, fuck it, pull it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it didn't, it clicked out. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I, oh, I, you know, I pull the, pull the charging handle back a little bit. There's a round in the chamber and okay. Pull out the mag. There's rounds in the magazine. Okay. And my gun was completely spotless. There was no reason why it didn't. Cause that very gun, I, um, well, we're not going to get into that, but I, I eventually shot it and it shot fine. fine. Yeah. It shot perfect. So there was no reason it didn't go. Not a reason in the world. So obviously, you know, it was meant for a reason. Yeah. So, um, some kind so, of divine intervention. Yes, very much so. So you have, you know, you have that. You have all this added stress, and then uh, you have you. You finally get home. You're supposed to be happy, and you hit a great depression. You know, raging alcoholic, this and that, fucking um, um, and then you know the whole shit with the jobs. It's it eats you. It, it eats you alive. Yeah. The stress, the, I guess you would say lack of motivation or something mm. like that. Like it, it like tears you apart and then you have flashbacks. You have to worry about this. You have to worry about that. And then PTSD. I got diagnosed with PTSD, but I didn't get diagnosed with the PTSD that normal people would get diagnosed with. Like people, oh, you know, Oh, don't even get me started with people nowadays, but like a car, old school a people, car accident or yeah, something like that. Old yeah. school people, you know, <clears throat> you, you experience some shit and like, you know, oh, he has PTSD. You know, what kind of PTSD? Oh, like, you know, he drinks, you know, he's probably like a threat to society, this and that. No, I'm not that kind of PTSD. I got, um, I guess you would say like. The doctor told me hypertension, but hypertension is like low blood pressure, isn't it? Something like that. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah it's something like that. Yeah. So I, because I looked it up, but um, when I when I asked him, I was like, "What is what is that?" You mm-hmm. know, he said, "You're you're over anxious and you're on high alert. Your brain is on high alert." So I'm like, "Okay," but that always like that always kind of stuck with me because I'll always. I'm always checking my surroundings every second of every day. Mm-hmm. There was, there is no way I'm looking straight and I'll have tunnel vision. Never experienced tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. I'm always looking. I'm always checking, you know, checking, checking, checking. Yeah. Always. I, I know where everyone is. Like a crackhead looking for his face. Yes. Yes. Like a tweaker. Yeah. Exactly. Just like a tweaker. Oh, oh God Christ. damn it, bro. <laughs> I'm I, so glad you caught on to that. I get you, bro. <laughs> so glad you caught on to that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, my wife called me that a couple times. She goes, are you tweaking again? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she calls me. It's my PTSD, okay. man. She calls it's me. kicking in, man. It's kicking in. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, but um, yeah, bro. Like, um, ever since I got diagnosed with that with the with the VA yeah uh they sent me up with like a, a therapist who I go to see like once or twice a month and stuff you know I go I uh, I had I, I was at the point where I was having two I would have like the lady I'm with now her name is very crazy hmm. you, you want to guess what her name is is it like Mary Jane no I don't know no Cra- no 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 is no, it no. crazy Mary no no, no. <laughs> I give up her I'm name not- is Dr. Ono Dr. Ono oh no <laughs> <laughs> O-N-O-H yeah. Oh no Oh no When I heard that I was like Oh no <laughs> <laughs> Too many Too many <laughs> Too many memes Right <laughs> Too but many she, she's Too many puns the, She's gotta be the most like She's a really nice lady Oh no Like she's so She's so nice Yeah And then I was I was with her I've been her, with her Since like 2015 mm. So I've been with her for a while. And then uh, I was with, uh, I forgot this lady's name. She was like a caseworker type thing. 
and I would go see her like once a week and stuff. We would talk and stuff. I take the wife with me, you know. She, she gets some stories out of her. She gets some stories out of me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she turned to an alcoholic. Here, <laughs> here, just, here, here, these stories. <laughs> here, these stories. She probably turned to an alcoholic. <laughs> But uh, no, <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah. Uh, but do know? you feel like all that is helping out that you're able to express yourself, talk about it? Oh, and- yeah. Oh, yes. And, you know, I smoke a lot. You know, it's not bad. And well, it's not bad. It's not good. It's like very what? bad. Smoke cigarettes, smoke cigars, smoke blunts. No, no, no weed. We no weed. work checks for it. Oh, OK. Um, But uh, I smoke cigarettes, smoke cigars. Yeah. Um. My drinking has dropped significantly since, you know, then. However, I can hang with anybody at ah, any given time. That's true. I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> I can drink with anybody at any yeah. time. It has been proven time and time again. <laughs> uh, my wife's sister is still trying to find somebody who can out drink me. Yeah. Yeah. I have a kill list now. I have a kill list. A kill list. I'm gonna I, add. I'm gonna add I've two to the, the kill list. I'm gonna add two to that list. I know. I know a couple of people that might be able to hang with you. <laughs> okay. If they want to get alcohol poisoning, it's on them. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, their death wish. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but um, yeah. So my, you know, I when I drink, I don't like. I don't get fucked up. No. You know, I just drink. I'll have a beer. You know, I'll have a couple of beers. Yeah. I'll have thirty. <laughs> but it doesn't couple do of 30 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had 30 yesterday yeah. thanksgiving but um Jesus. no um it doesn't like it doesn't i'm dead on the inside when it comes to alcohol yeah i fucked myself up so much in the marines that alcohol just does not do anything to me anymore mm-hmm. it doesn't so it's just juice that's all it is just yeah. juice yeah. it's just a flavored a replenisher yeah that's all that's all it is like I can't remember the last time I actually felt drunk. Hmm. Like the last time I probably was 2013. It has to be like the last time. You got to start actually... mixing your alcohol, some tequila and whiskey. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't get drunk. I just threw up. Oh. I had whiskey and tequila yeah. and beer. Ugh. Very long night. That's nasty. <laughs> yes. yes, very nasty. Yeah. Yes. But... um. Uh, that was actually the first time I ever threw up too. Really? Yes, that was the first time I ever threw up. I had I, I had four cups of uh of uh Crown Crown Royal on the rocks because mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to this party, my neighbor's party, Crown Royal on the rocks, thinking oh they're just gonna have beer, down them you know whatever pregame, go to the party, and these dudes are just giving me beer after beer after beer after beer, and they're already gone and I'm sitting there I'm like, you want to go? Want to go? By the time she goes, uh, you know, let's stick around for a little bit longer. All right, cool. Uh, we stick around. And they break out the f- Patron bottles, bro, <laughs> and it wasn't the Añejos either. <laughs> and when I tell you, this dude brought out like he didn't have normal shot glasses. No, he had shot glasses. Oh shit! Like, that was those like little, a triple, uh, like a triple shot or what? Oh no, this is like a, a quadruple oh, shot, shit. bro. He had those little, you know, the skinny champagne yeah. cups. Yeah, 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 he filled that up. That was our shots. Yeah. And I told the wife, I'm like, this is not going to be good. I'll just do one. Just do one. And then we'll leave. <sighs> All right, fine. Fine. I'll just do Peer one. pressure. Yeah. I'll just do one, but you brought us on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the story. So I did it. Uh, long story short, I ended up doing about six more of those. On top of four cups of straight whiskey. I almost threw up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> on top of four <laughs> cups of straight whiskey. And Lord knows how many beers. Jesus Christ, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't even drunk. Uh-huh. I walked home. I ordered pizza, you know, because we ate, but we ate, you know, early. This is probably around 10, 11 o'clock at night. So I ordered Domino's or whatever. Yeah. We get Domino's. We're going to sit there and watch our show and stuff. And then, yes, the tequila met the whiskey. <laughs> and they did not like each other. Excuse me, sir. I'm coming <laughs> through. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, Damn. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so then we know you can hold with that. So then what's your what's your poison then? So like what what is it that you're taking? Other than are you taking anything? Like uh, you know, you've seen the, the therapist, but are you taking any Yeah, any they meds? um they prescribe me uh Dival Pro X, Depicort. Uh, and you feel that, you feel that's good? I don't think any pills are good, honestly. Uh honestly, I'd I'd much rather smoke weed. I think it's probably healthier than popping pills all the time. Yeah, yeah. But you can't take it work. Yeah. I'm taking fifteen hundred milligrams of of Dival Pro X to uh 
It's a mood stabilizer. Mm -hmm. And then um, I stopped taking, uh, uh, what the hell was it called? It was another pill. I was taking about 500 milligrams of this pill. Uh, it was to help sleep. Mm. Like it was meant to just knock me out. It was like a it was like a low grade Ambien, mm -hmm. Ambien pill, and um, so I eventually stopped taking those because you know I didn't want to pop pills anymore. I didn't want to be become dependent. I'm a very independent person. I did not want to become dependent on it. Yeah. So I stopped taking that, and then um, I turned to the melatonins, the mm. vitamins. Yeah. Taking out melatonins ever since, and melatonins knocked me out. No, no crazy nightmares or dreams with those melatonins. Oh yeah, well that happens all the time, mm. but it's not as often as it was. Yeah. So, yeah. And those mood stabilizers, you think uh, if have you gotten without without doing those or? I did, and um, you know, for a while it was cool. Yeah. But you know, I got you know, I got bad again. Yeah. So I had to, I had to go back on it. I was like flipping out, and like every little thing would just piss me off. Yeah. So I just, I had to go back on it. I had a mental breakdown <clears throat> and stuff. You know, a good thing the wife is really supportive of me and stuff. Real supportive of it. So, yeah. Wow. That's a trip, bro. Everything that you've experienced, like you wouldn't even think, right? Like, you you know, we all hear about it. We, we know you guys come back. We, you guys are heroes. We celebrate you. But we don't really get to hear those kind of stories, man. And I'm glad that you, you're able to sit here and talk to us about it because, you know, I think some of us need to hear that kind of stuff. You know, we don't we take it for granted, you know, when when uh, when, when someone like you uh, and hundreds and thousands of hundreds of thousands of others that go out there and serve for our country. So much stress that gets put into you, not just the body more more than anything. It's the mind. Right. And if you could imagine if I have never met my wife at the time I did, yeah. and then all that happened, shit, I'd probably be one of those homeless veterans on the street. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So. Just never know. You know, everything happens for a reason. That's yeah. That's been my motto ever since then. Everything happens for a reason. Wow. Ever since February 2012, everything yeah. happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, never forget that day. If you're going to leave a message out to anybody out there that's listening right now, that's kind of going through a situation like you, maybe not even like veteran, uh, military, any kind of like mental <clears throat> issue. Like what, what would be your message out to them right now? Um, I'd have to say there is light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. You just have to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, now looking back on it, I took the coward's way and it didn't work. So obviously we, you know, from experience, I know the coward's way does not work. And even if it did work, it still wouldn't have worked because, you know, eventually there's people who would have missed, who would have missed me. There's people who would have, you know, went into a depression and then experienced everything I experienced after that. Yeah. So, you know, just keep going. You know, it's very cliche, but just keep going keep grinding, you know, find your... I don't want to say poison, but find your, like, find your motivation. Your muse. Like, my motivation is music. Mm -hmm. You know, I was never big on music. I, you know, I was, my parents forced me to be in music in school. And I always thought, damn, you know, I'm kind of a nerd, this and that. And all that. I, was, I played football. So it was kind of hard to be in band and play football. Yeah. But, you know, I made it happen. And then eventually, you know, after all that stressful times and stuff like that, you know, I started writing, you know, started writing all that. Like I told you last time, you know, writing poetry and yeah. this and that. Started writing again. That was a way of expressing myself. That was like a little bit of therapy. Then, you know, I went back into, you know, I had that little experience doing, you know, making beats and stuff. So I went into that. I did that. And then, you know, eventually, you know, long story short, I'm now, you know, well, I'm kind of retired of writing. I retired from writing. You know, I don't really do it. I do it every now and then when Princess wants me to. Yeah. But, you know, it's not all the time. It's very rare that I do it now. But I'm, you know, I'm writing music. I'm making beats. You know, I'm, you know, I'm giving her pointers on what to do, what not to do, what to say. You know, I'll give her, give her advice and stuff. Make sure her songs are coming out on top. Um, I mix it. I master it. And then now I'm, you know, getting my feet wet and doing music videos. Mm. So, you know, eventually your motivation will become bigger. Yeah. 
you just have to have patience. You got to have time. Well, I don't ever have time, but <laughs> you got to have patience. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have patience. You got to have a drive. You got to, you got to, you got to want it. It's just like smoking. I, I don't think I'm ever going to give up smoking. It's an unfortunate thing. I've tried numerous times. The last time I tried, I was, I was smoke free for like four months. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, smoke. It, it, it fucking it hit me again and then you know i just i had to smoke smoking has as shitty as it sounds smoking has been like, like my medicine yeah it's been my medicine so yeah well well there you guys have it i mean uh like chris said there's that light at the end of the tunnel there is gonna be a journey in between all that mm -hmm. you just gotta stay focused weather find, the storm weather, weather the, the storm. storm find your muse weather the storm get after it um there there are hotlines out there that you guys can call i'll put them down and on the show notes down below um and right now especially with the, with social media there's so many people that are willing to talk to people out there mm -hmm. that are just saying like hey man just send me a message let me know if you need to talk you know just maybe sometimes you just need a vent mm -hmm. do it man you know take advantage of those things you know because there's people out there that are willing to listen that are willing to help and i'm one of those you know so mm -hmm. uh again um, i am too hit me up there you go you have it i mean it's just everywhere around you now so um there is an outlet just you have to be able to get over all that and and be comfortable with yourself and to go out there and say it and i know that's the hardest part that really is that's probably the, the, hardest, is part. the hardest part is it is the hardest admitting part you have a problem identifying right we talked about it like, like, identifying yeah, like the said, problem identifying the problem so exactly. yeah there is a rhyme to all this shit guys you listen to the podcast listen to this episode i hope you guys did into it uh, from start to finish because there's a lot that went into it, um, and we had a great time doing it, you know. So, uh, again, took us some really, really deep places. Yeah, we did. So, <laughs> uh, uh, one of many. So, you guys make sure again, follow Chris, check him out. Still doing amazing things with the music and everything. So, uh, thanks again for coming out. Hey, thanks for having I appreciate me. Appreciate you, brother. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do this again. Oh yes, so, definitely. All right, man. You guys have it. Take care. Listen, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff, whatever. I, I'll read the show notes down below. I hate saying it, you know, but you guys know what to do. <laughs> Adios, take care. We talking again, we talking again. Now tune dead to the tap in. Now tune dead to the tap in. Now tune dead to the tap in. We talking again, we talking again. Come on. Lock.